One brief, shining moment in Sam Phillips' Sun Record Studio in Memphis, four legends of the rockabilly era were all in the same place at the same time. Elvis and Carl and Jerry Lee, all of us had roughly the same background. You know, we lived within a hundred miles of uh, the Memphis radio station. And there was uh, programs on the air like Dewey Phillips' Red Hot and Blue, which they called race music at the time. And we grew up on that kind of music. I would have never written a song like Big River if I hadn't had the black gospel and blues influence. Now I toss the weeping willow out of cry. And I showed the clouds out of cover of a clear blue sky. And the tears that I cried for that woman gonna flood you, Big River. And I'm gonna sit right here until I die. Johnny Cash, um, when he came in with Marshall Grant and Luther Perkins, and after we got through auditioning, I said, Johnny, we got an interesting sound here, and uh, let's just kind of keep it like that and go with this uh, another time or two and see what happens. Well, I knew in my mind that, wait a minute, when you got that vamp going, chung da da chung da da chung da you know, I thought, this is John R. Cash, as he wanted to be known. <laughs> Hello, I'm Johnny Cash. When I first came to Nashville, I saw Johnny Cash on stage. I was sitting in the audience. He walked out on that stage. And to this day, and probably till the day I die, even though we forget most things, I'll never forget that feeling. You know, it was just the way he moved and the way he twitched. It just suited me just fine. And I just thought that he was the sexiest thing I'd ever seen. Johnny Cash can walk out on stage today. It's just tear an audience to pieces, you know. I learned something. I said, boy, don't ever count country music out. <laughs> you know, especially if you've got that rockability, which he had. Johnny had it. I think the secret of the success of rockabilly music was country music with an edge. I first heard that uh, good old rock and roll uh, and rockabilly. I don't know, it was great. I didn't think about it then. I just knew it turned me on, you know, Buddy Holly and songs like Rave On and uh, Peggy Sue and Elvis with the Hound Dog and all that. It was, uh, those were great days. Rock, 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 everybody. Rock, 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 everybody. Rock, 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 everybody. You rock it and you rock it and you rock it around. Roll, 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 everybody. To form what we call rock and roll, it came out of R&B and it came out of hillbilly music, the rockabilly, uh, it came out of pop music. It was a new kind of music that, uh, that all of us growing up in that period related to. It was something that drew us all together and the people who lived through the birth of rock and roll know what I'm talking about. Well now, uh, what do you think? That was crazy music, man. That sends me, Jack. <laughs> That music sends me, man. It sends me. You gotta dig that music all the way. <laughs> rock and roll is cool, Daddy, and you know it. Rock and roll was happening in pockets all across the country. Buddy Holly in, in Lubbock, Texas, and Don and I in Knoxville, Tennessee, we were the only kids in school with ducktails, you know, and all that combination of country and, and uh, R&B, I guess you could say. Wake up, little Susie, wake up. get together, Don and I would, and listen to Bo Diddley. And he, he played a great lick on that, Bo Diddley, Bo Diddley, where did he go? And it was a lick like... And of course, Don, when he got his recording contract, he expanded on that and he played... When I 
all that rock and roll was really hot. I was 10 years old, and of course, being a teenager and a kid going into her teens, I was very influenced by that. But we weren't really allowed to listen to a lot of that music because of the religion, the religious background. My grandpa being a Pentecostal, holy roller preacher, and I was already bleaching my hair and wearing short skirts, and they thought I was going to hell anyway. But I did love that music. I loved it because it was young and youthful and energetic and playful. Love's gotta be warm, and love's gotta be right. And this ain't no ice cube, it's just a ribbon night, so don't you dish me out the too low. Well, rock and roll did take a, a, a bad rap there from the older generation, but hasn't it always been that way? <laughs> Young people have their music, and the older generation just can't understand it. Country music at that time was taking a back seat to this rockabilly and rock and roll. Almost every kind of music was having to sit back and say, wait, what's happening? 